Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, a few months ago, I made a video on this little 10 meter radio. This is the Titan by Moonraker. Now, Moonraker is actually a ham radio dealer here in the UK, and this is their extremely cheap radio offering to get on the 10 meter ham band. Now, you may be wondering why I'm making another video. Well, this is actually version two, or Mark II, as you might call it. Now you do still get all the same accessories in the box, such as a bracket, microphone, power cable, and a manual. However, the manual I believe is slightly different compared to the Mark I, because it appears that the menu items in this manual are in a slightly different order to the manual that's available on the website. But we can check that when we go through the menu. Now this radio currently sells on the Moonraker website for just under 140 pounds. That's 180 US dollars. And yep, Moonraker will ship this radio to the US as far as I know. So this radio comes as standard as a 10 meter radio out of the box, but it can cover from 12 to 10 meters. That's including 11 meters for all you guys that like 11 meters. And don't forget, that's actually multi-band or all mode. So you get upper and lower sideband, FM, AM and even CW. Now the front panel looks exactly the same apart from the branding here. The branding now has this raised feel to it rather than just a silk print. Now, of course, that isn't going to make the radio any better. Now, the microphone socket has been changed to a six pin connection, which is different to the four pin connection that we saw on the Mark I version. It still uses the same type of power cable on the rear, and it has all the same connections as the Mark I version did on the rear, such as an SO239 for the antenna socket, a 3.5mm for an external speaker and a 3.5 millimeter for a key. Now there's also an RJ45 socket, which was on the Mark I as well, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. So how does it sound when receiving? Let's take a quick listen. I, I, I did choose the Flex uh, basically uh, for, for the for it remote capabilities because uh, often I'm, uh, I'm uh, traveling for business and now the bands are not that great today and they never are when I need to make a video on a radio that receives or transmits sub 30 megahertz. But did you notice when I enabled the noise reduction feature in those clips? Now normally noise reduction on cheap radios do not work very well, but I think this actually passes the test and could possibly be usable without that underwater sound that you sometimes get. Now the display on the right of the radio shows the receive signal strength when receiving and the SWR when transmitting. You can actually change that within the menu settings so it shows something else, but as default it will show SWR and signal strength reception. Now the distance between 0 and 5 is actually quite large, so it always looks like it's receiving a strong station if you look at it quickly, but it's actually just measuring the noise floor. Now this kind of leads to not much movement when receiving stations. Now the LCD colors can be changed as per the Mark I and in my last video on this radio I showed you how to change that but it's just a menu setting. Now going from left to right on the front panel controls we have here are the on and off control which also acts as a volume. There's also a squelch control on that outer ring. We then have an RF gain and power level control We'll also test that in a moment as on the Mark 1 version, it kind of had an issue with being linear. Now in the middle is the main frequency or channel change control. And then to the right of this, we have a band stroke mode change control. Now this also pushes in to select band or mode before you turn it. On the far right is where we find the clarifier or RIT. Now this is where we can finally tune, receive and transmit frequency if they're locked together. Now let's test the power output. So first on upper sideband with the power control fully down. Now it's just a smidge over two watts and then with the power control fully turned up, we see around 40 watts. Now on FM, it's pretty much the same. And as I start with the power control on the lowest setting, it's just over two watts. And if you watch as I turn the power control up to the right, very slowly, you can see that the power level starts to increase. Now, I would not say that this is 100% linear. There still appears to have some jumps, like it jumps up a few watts at a time. Now, at full power, we do reach 40 watts on FM. 
Now, if you're going to be using this with an external amplifier where you need to monitor the input to the amplifier, then I would recommend that you remember where each of these peak power levels are. Maybe test it on a power meter before hooking it up. Now on AM, we see around the same power levels with the maximum hitting just over 40 watts. Now I'm using a 50 amp power supply here, so there's no current shortage and the power meter's output is connected directly to a dummy load for a near perfect match. Now, as mentioned earlier, the menu system kind of looks the same as the Mark 1, but things are in a slightly different order. To access the menu, you just hold the function button down until the menu appears. Now, as mentioned earlier, this radio comes as a dedicated 10 meter radio, and you have to perform a little procedure if you want to wide band it so it covers from 12 to 10 meters. Simply turn the power off, hold down the top right button, hold down the PTT of the mic, and then power the radio back on. Now at this point you can use the center rotary control to choose which kind of band you want it to be in. So for 10 meters only, you just make sure that 10 is selected, but as I turn that control, you can see the available options. So if I select HF and then press the PTT on the mic, the radio will now have full range from 12 to 10 meters. Now the radio will still be channelized with 40 channels per block, and these go from block A to block J, which you can change using the band rotary control. Now, for those of you that's interested in the pre-programmed CB bands, just perform the same operation, but this time select CB from the menu. Now, when you use the band control to choose which set of CB channels you'd like to use, you'll get the available options like EU, US, German, Poland, and even the UK. Now the UK band is the only band I believe that has a different frequency ending. They all end in 1250, opposed to a flat five or a flat zero. Okay, so now let's take a listen to hear what the transmitted audio sounds like. I'll be using a local STR receiver with the radio still connected to my dummy load. This is Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey and Zero DQW testing the audio on the Moonraker Titan, Mark II on FM. This is Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, testing the audio on the Moonraker Titan Mark II, over. This is Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, and Zero DQW, te testing the audio on the Moonraker Titan Mark II on upper side band. This is Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, over. Now, if you're interested about the mic socket or the RJ45 socket on the rear, then I've put this little slide together. Now, even though the mic socket is now six pin instead of four, there's actually only one extra wire that's used, and it appears to supply 13.8 volts to the microphone. Now, the Mark I did not have this feature, so we'll have to take a look inside the mic in a moment to figure out why we've got this 13.8 volts. Now, the RJ45 socket on the rear is the same as the Mark I, and the Mark II provides a UART connection for when programming the radio, a ground, a mic input, a PTT, a key line and a 13.8 volt DC output. Now I do not have any details about the programming cable or programming software for this at this precise time, and I'm not sure if it's actually available. Maybe it's just a factory programming tool. So lastly, let's just take a quick look inside the microphone and see if we can figure out why there's a 13.8 volt supply coming from the microphone socket on this radio. Now I really wish that I'd done this with the Mark I so I could compare the mic boards but you can clearly see a marking for 13.8 volts on that silk screen there. However, I cannot really see any components on this board that would utilize that DC supply. There are a few components there, but maybe it is actually to supply some power to the microphone component itself. Who knows? Maybe you do, and if you do, let us know down in the comments. Incidentally, the back of the microphone actually has a piece of metal on the back, this is presumably to provide some weight to the mic as it's pretty empty inside there. In fact, it looks like this particular microphone could also be used as a speaker mic, but where there should be a speaker, it's just completely empty. Obviously, the Moonraker Titan doesn't support an audio out from its microphone or RJ45 connections. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's the Moonraker Titan Mark II. Not much else to say, really. It's a 140 pounds, 10 meter radio that can be easily modified to work between 12 and 10 meters. It's an extremely cheap radio, so remember if you're looking for top quality, then you're gonna to have to pay top prices. But for 140 pounds or 
or around $180, it's not a bad radio. It chucks out 40 watts on both FM and AM and sideband, and that will get you on the air. I just wish the HF bands were a little bit better today, so I could have actually made some contacts. Anyway, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.